Hello, pre-calculus students. Today we're going to learn how to graph points um, using polar coordinates. In the past, when you've graphed points, um, coordinates, locations, you always used rectangular coordinates, X and Y. You went so many places to the left or right of the origin, and then you went so, from that point, you went so many places up or down from the X axis. So those are called rectangular coordinates. And they're used to give locations relative to the origin. Let me, uh, <coughs> excuse me, let me um, share my screen with you here. And we're going to look at some graph paper, a new type of graph paper. This is called polar graph paper. You'll notice that uh, there is an origin here, but in polar graphing, it's often called the pole. And it might be called that if you imagine looking down on the Earth from the North Pole. And these would be your lines of longitude. So this is you know, 90 degrees north is the North Pole, 80 degrees north, 70 degrees north, 60 degrees. And out here would be the equator somewhere. So that's kind of a background of where the name comes from. And we're going to learn to graph um, points, lines, circles, and all sorts of nifty shapes on polar graphs. I'd recommend that you download some polar graph paper to help yourself with that so you can practice. <clears throat> Two places that you can download that. One is you can go to the pre-calculus files page of my website. And I've got the PDF for that graph paper there. I got that PDF from printablepaper.net. Um, they have more types of paper there than you can imagine. Music paper, um, calligraphy paper. Um, I'm just drawing a blank here. <clears throat> there was something for sewing or knitting or something. Just all anything you can imagine. Calendars. Go to printablepaper.net and of course read that notice. <clears throat> you want to make sure you download the PDF, not just the uh, thumbnail view that that you look at what the PDF contains. So having done that, let's get started on some polar coordinates. So I need to establish um, a baseline, and that baseline is this pole right here. And we can think of this as still as a kind of a positive x-axis. And we can think of this as still our positive y-axis. That's a crooked y-axis there. <coughs> but what we're doing now is we're going to plot points relative to here. So if we were to plot the point 3, 4 on the xy plane, <coughs> we'd go over 3. So we'd go 1, 2, 3. And then we'd have to go up 4. We'd have to you know, take that measurement and, you know, figure out what four is and go up from there. Um, why would you graph rectangular coordinates on a polar graph? It just doesn't make sense. So we need to come up with a new way of graphing. <coughs> and we're going to use, instead of x, y, we're going to use r and theta. Now, this shouldn't be new to you. We've already, at least in our current lessons, <coughs> students I'm teaching as I make this video, we've already covered complex numbers in polar form. That was R cis theta. And the I and the cis gave us the indication that that was a complex number. Now we're going to graph um, coordinates, so just locations. So instead of x, y, we're now going to have R and theta. <laughs> now, if I'm given X, Y coordinates, how do I convert to R theta? Well, R is X squared plus Y squared, and you take the square root. It's the distance from the pole. And theta, <clears throat> is um, the arc tangent of y over x. Now remember, the arc tangent only gets us into the first and fourth quadrants. 
So if X is positive, meaning you're in the first and fourth quadrants, you just take the arc tangent. And it's the arc tangent of Y over X plus 180 degrees or pi, however you're working your, uh, your um, angle uh, measurements, if X is less than zero. So if we're in the second and third quadrant, what if <coughs> X is equal to zero? What's theta going to be? Well, if X is equal to zero, we're on the Y axis. So theta is either equal um, 90 degrees, pi over two, or 270 degrees, um, three pi over two, or negative pi over two, however you're working this. So that's how we convert <coughs> um, from rectangular to polar coordinates. If we want to go from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates, well, x is r cosine theta, and y is r sine theta. None of that should be new to you. All of that is the exact same trigonometry that we covered when we did complex numbers in polar form. So that should all make sense. <clears throat> now that we've introduced that, let's graph some points. Now, every point has exactly one um, set of coordinates in polar form and um, rectangular form. 0.34, that's the only way to write it. But we can write um, we can write coordinates an infinite number of ways in polar form. For instance, now you'll notice each of these circles, so this circle has a radius of one, this circle has a radius of two because it's one, two units away from the pole, et cetera. So if, uh, let's see, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, so each of these is 15 degrees. So the coordinates of this point right here, I'm at, I'll go out to the circle. So I'm one, two, three, four units away from the pole at an angle of 15 degrees. So I could write that as four comma 15 degrees, not cis because this is not a complex number. This is just a coordinate. It's giving us a location relative to the pole here. <coughs> I can write that a number of other ways. And let's just stick with degrees now. Let's not even worry about radians on this problem. I think everyone would agree that if I added 365, uh, 360 degrees to that, I'd be right back to this point. So I could also write that point as 4, 375 degrees. So now all of a sudden you can see there are an infinite number of ways of writing this because all I have to keep doing is adding 360 degrees to this and I keep getting um, co-terminal angles so my points in the same location. What if I went this way? Well, now it's four comma um, negative 345 degrees. <coughs> So those are three ways. Um, R is positive. It is possible for R to be negative. And if R is negative, that just means we're going to go in the opposite direction. So if I wanted this point here, I could also call it negative four comma 195 degrees because I could go, Um, well, I could go negative four, which is one, two, three, four, and then a hundred um, positive 195 degrees. 195 degrees would be counterclockwise. So here's 180 and here's the other 15. But usually the way we think about it is we would do the 195 degrees first. So I go out here to, here's 180. So here's 190, so 195. So I'm on this line somewhere. So 195 degrees, this direction is positive R's. 
continuing this way, this direction is the negative Rs. So this is negative four, positive 195 degrees. Because I'm at a positive 195 degrees, I'm in this direction. Oh, but it says go the opposite direction, negative four. So I have to go that way. Now you try, I want both R and theta to be negative. Give that a try. <clears throat> Forgetting about this uh, video, putting my picture in the upper right hand corner, I have to make sure we're not covering anything. <coughs> Alrighty, so this point, um, obviously it's four units away. We want it to be negative. It's got to be a negative four. So what I need is how do I write this angle down here as a negative angle? Well, that would be negative 165 degrees. So there's five ways of writing the coordinates of this point. And of course, we could also do it in radians. So this would be four comma pi over 12, et cetera. <coughs> All righty, so um, assuming that you have some graph paper and you're ready to go, let's try um, graphing a few points. Where is the point six comma 90 degrees? If you don't have graph paper, point to it on your screen. So here's the 90 degree. I know we always put R first and then theta, but when I graph, I usually graph. I go to theta first and then R. So I go to 90 degrees and then one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six comma 90 degrees. Where is um, one comma 225 degrees? Either graph it on your paper or put your finger on the screen. Now I don't remember what number I said. I think it's one comma 225 degrees. So here's 180, here's halfway through. So this is 225 degrees going in this direction. I want one unit away from the pole. All right, now graph this point or use the same point, write it with a negative R, and a positive theta. <clears throat> um, there are a number of ways of doing that. I'm gonna call it negative one comma 45 degrees because we'd go to the 45 degrees, which is this direction out here. Then we go in the opposite direction, one unit. Now write it with a positive R and a negative theta. <clears throat> positive R and negative theta would be one comma negative 135 degrees. <clears throat> And lastly, do a negative R and a negative theta. <clears throat> I would do negative one, negative 315 degrees. And the reason is negative 315 degrees would get me over here on the 45 degrees side. And then I go negative one in that direction. 
Now, interestingly enough, um, finding the distance between points in polar graphing is very easy. In fact, you may not think so, but you already know how to do it. So let's take a look at some points here. I like to draw these in just because it helps me uh, not get lost in all the angles. <clears throat> so here's the point um, one, two, three comma 15 degrees. And here's the point, um, uh, here's 75 degrees, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is six comma 75 degrees. How do we find this distance between them? Got any ideas? Well, if you said the law of cosines, you are correct. Because we know this distance here is three. We know this distance here is six. And we know that this distance here, or this angle here is 75 minus 15. So the distance between two points in polar form, <clears throat> remember this is R1 theta one, and this is R2 theta two. Um, the distance is, uh, we're just gonna use the law of cosines here to get this side. That distance will be the square root of A squared or R1 squared plus B squared, which is R2 squared, minus 2AB cosine C. Very easy. So that's our introduction to graphing points in polar form and finding the distance between those points. The key things to remember, there's no I here. This is not cis. This is not R cis theta. These are not complex numbers. These are just coordinates. It's just a location relative to that fixed origin or pole. And so it's R comma theta, just like X comma Y. And um, there are an infinite number of ways of writing each point. There's only two R's. You could have either a positive R value or a negative R value, but the absolute value of that won't change. But the thetas, you can keep adding 160, 180 or 360 degrees, and, that, and 180 will change the R. 360 will change the theta. Um, you can have a field day. Infinite number of ways of writing each point in polar form. Um, that's all I have for you in this video. Have a great day.